welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we are going to be discussing Seeking Sister Wife that I've completely forgot that I have not recorded yet. So, um, so with again, just as the announcement that has been kind of been the running theme for the last three episodes. Um, gonna be behind again on Married at First Sight only because I already went to the hospital yesterday. So that, um, is definitely gonna be delaying things, but I'm kind of right where I need to pee. So hopefully that Married at First Sight won't be too far behind. Um, but let's hop into some hot goss. So I have a couple pieces for you guys. We all remember Lita. And the fact that she's going through some shit at the moment. Well, she also now has to add speeding amid her theft and wire fraud case. So let's get into it. So, my day fiance alum Lita Margarita was charged with speeding amid her theft and wire fraud case. And this is based on In Touch. Lita was caught driving 15 miles per hour above the 55 miles per hour speed limit in Wisconsin, according to a filing made on February 29th and viewed exclusively by InTouch. She is scheduled to appear in court on April 16th regarding the charge. The former reality star was caught speeding just four months after she was arrested in Wisconsin for theft and wire fraud after she was suspected of stealing thousands of dollars from her workplace in um October of 2023. And so we won't go into any of that currently. Um because I think we've talked about it. So I won't go too much into that. But I find it very funny that she's also now being charged with speeding amid all of that. Good for you, Lita. Good for you. Isn't that just karma? Anyway. That's it for that. Let's move on to the second piece that I have, which is going to give us a great little segue to the episode. So, do we remember the former Seeking Sister Wife couple, Dimitri Snowden, and whatever that chick's name was? Was it Chrissy? Did they actually fit, like, legally get married? I'm not even sure, but anyways. Um, Chrissy Peterson and whatever, they have now finalized their divorce. So here we go. See, his wife fans were sure to notice that the fan favorite couple, the students who have been gone from this for some time, um, they've been gone from the season. This is the second season they're not a part of, I believe. Um, so even though they're not on the show, that might be because they are now no longer even married. So the divorce for Dimitri and Chrissy was finalized on January 2nd, according to doc- court documents obtained by In Touch. Yet again, the former couple signed an agreement waiving spousal support, saying, quote, irreconcilable differences have arisen between petitioner and respondent, which differences have led to a remediable breakdown of the marriage. The parties agree that there is no possibility of saving the marriage through counseling or other means. Demetria and Chrissy tied the knot on July 9th, 2020, after she traveled. Oh, y'all. This is not who I thought it was. It's not that, because I'm like, that's not her name. This is the girl from South Africa. And they, she clearly came and they got married. Oh. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. Um, so they tied the knot on July 9th, 2020, after she traveled from South Africa, if you remember, with her two children to join the plural family. While their date of separation was listed as January 21st, 2021, just six months after getting married, Chrissy filed for a restraining order against Dimitri and his spiritual wife, Ashley. There we go. Snowden, that March. At the time, she alleged that she had been physically abused, so trigger warning, guys, I didn't quite catch that. So I will add a trigger warning at the beginning of this um, for um, domestic violence. But um, yeah, so she alleged being physically abused, quote, I was woken up by him slamming my head into the headboard of the bed, and he was yelling at me, oh my god, 
My head was slammed into the headboard several times. Oh my god. I knew there was some shit, but I didn't know this shit. Um, this is what she claimed, saying that the incident took place on January 13th, 2021. So not long before, I think, the breakdown, right? Or not long after the, okay, January's, oh yeah, okay, I think like that's months after. Um, she goes on to say that he, quote, choked me during sex, even though I repeatedly told him not to, so that clearly was not consensual. The more I struggled, the more he enjoyed it, so he's a fucking sadist. She continued, I stopped saying no after a few times because any struggle by me would prolong the sex and the choking. She was granted a restraining order against Dimitri, but it was later dissolved by a judge in April 2021 after she failed to meet, quote, her burden of proof. How is one supposed to prove this? How is she supposed to fucking prove this? Oh my god, this is sick. The restraining order she requested against Ashley was never granted. Dimitri filed for divorce from Chrissy one month later. He doesn't even fucking have a right to it. Dimitri and Ashley documented their journey to add sister wives to the polygamous family on season one and two of TLC's Seeking Sister Wife, if you remember. It was on season two um, that we, we watched Dimitri and Ashley marry former sister wife Vanessa Cobbs. When she left the family and relocated to Australia, she couldn't get far enough in April of 2019. While courting Chrissy on season three, Taylor Middleton also joined the family. Taylor ultimately ended her relationship with the family via a video chat with Dimitri, which aired on the show, later calling her time with the family the lowest part of her life. There's clearly a trend, because even before they were on the show, they talked about they had a sister wife. That didn't go good either. He's disgusting, and Ashley's a part of it. Dimitri and Ashley while currently living a monogamous life, also previously previously called it quits with Ashley, confirming the news via Instagram in July 2021, two months after Dimitri filed for divorce from Chrissy. It's a quote, I'm single and grateful for life. She wrote at the time, adding that she was deeply moved by the DMs, check-ins, words of encouragement, and shared experiences that she received. So I think this is Chrissy. Um, after more than one year apart, Ashley confirmed in a statement obtained by in touch that she was not single anymore as she and Dimitri were working on reconciliation. Recon what? Why? They were trying to reconcile. Why? Anyway, we're working to to be to really like be able to be true and authentic to who we are. Oh, this is Ashley all. That is right. Ashley did say that they were not together and now they're back together. Sick. Anyway. She's got kids with him, though. Um, but anyway, filter out that noise people think that they're entitled to our lives. It's like, we all, we are healing, so whatever. Ashley and Demetri are perfectly in love, I guess, whatever. And Chrissy is dealing with the fallout of the bullshit she went through. But there's that. That is that for that piece of podcasts and that leads us right into the perfect segue into seeking a sister wife the first time that i'm doing this season five episode one seeking can be a shock mm -hmm. we start off with the davis family so we got nick jennifer danielle and april and we also got the baby here too nick said that his want for a polygamous relationship was due to him watching Three's Company and decided that he wanted to live this life. Um, I haven't watched many episodes of Three's Company, but I have seen a few. How did you get Three's Company and then translate that to polygamy? Um. Hmm, that feels more like you just interpreted it the way you wanted to. Um, anyways, so we're all at a toy store. We're going to pick something out for the baby. Um, the baby's name is Vera. Um, and they're all Vera's mom. Not 
not just uh, Jennifer, they're all her mom. Um, they prefer um, that he stays at home and then he riches himself. They prefer that, he says. They prefer it. Right. So he's a stay at home dad. Lord. Um, so they do want to add uh, another wife to the mix. Ideally, they would like to have four or five in total. But Danielle, being the most recent sister wife, is not about it. She worries about whether or not they'll find someone that they can be compatible with the way they are now. Um, she says, like, she's the newest addition. It hasn't been very long. They have baby Vera, who kind of came into the mix, um, who came, like, only maybe a few months after they got married. She's not ready for this. Um, but anyway. She, she should never have been in this situation. Anyway. Um. They are now in the next scene making their huge ass bit. But things have changed, y'all. Things have changed. They did get a bigger house. That has like, I think, four bedrooms. They got a 12 foot bed. Yep. Yeah, 12 foot bed. Lord, they say they, um, everyone has to take a corner in order to make this bed because you can't make this bed by yourself. I mean, you probably could, but anyways, um, it probably wouldn't work out very well. Um, so yeah, they have that and they said there is enough space for everybody and a little bit extra just in case. Jennifer, in case of what? In case of what? In case you decide to fuck in the bed with the other people. Not only that, Vera's in the bed too. Oh, fuck Jesus. Um. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So he's literally fucking these women as well in this bed. If, uh, with everybody. Uh, it, it just, mm. Why can't they have separate rooms? Oh, they say they don't want to have separate rooms because they don't want to have to do a schedule and have to figure that out. They all don't want to not have Nick with them. That feels like, that feels a little bit like codependency. Yeah. Wow. Um, but they do technically have another room that Nick likes to call the boom boom room. Jersey Shore called. They want their term back. Are you kidding me? The boom boom room of the sky. Daniel actually doesn't like that he calls it the boom boom room because it's just, it's distasteful, really and truly. Um, but yeah, that they have a boom boom room, but they technically have a sex in, but maybe sometimes they'll have sex in the same bed that they all sleep in. Ew. Anyways, he kind of goes on to describe this whole sister wife situation with him and he says he's the sun and there are the planets right and the planets have to revolve around the sun and you know what sometimes sometimes a planet might not get quite enough one time you know um but to, you know they still stay in the orbit they get just enough to stay in the orbit that feels sick this feels sick. Oh, this feels sick. Anyways, they're still my favorite, though. I will admit they are still my favorite group of people. Um, as we know, we've learned before, April and Jen are legally married to each other. So now it only seems like the right thing to do and get Danielle her very own wife. So that's why they're going to do it. This is not going to go good, y'all. Anyway. That is it for the Davis family. Let's move on. Let's move on to the Sherwood family. So this is a new family for us. We've got Shane and Ashley. They have been married for two years. 
um, they met during um, competitive axe throwing. Ashley is currently six months pregnant and they do have a son already. Um, but they have been open to finding Shane's, um, you know, person or whatever. Right. Um, but before that, you know, Ashley needs to get to know him before they meet him. Um, and, uh, they're going to be seeing, or she's going to be seeing Grace, who, spoiler alert, was Ashley's makeup artist for her wedding. So she's like, she came in her makeup and shit and she dipped and they never saw each other again until one day they saw her and on like a dating site and they swiped on, on her or whatever. So I was like, oh, that's, um, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, um, they're going to be going bowling, Ashley and Grace. And we meet Grace and, you know, she is happy to, you know, form this friendship with Ashley, you know, before, you know, anything else. Um, Ashley loves that her and Grace connect on an intellectual level. So, yeah, I mean, everything seems to be going great, right? They seem to be clicking. And then she gets this phone call from Shane and she says, okay, well, I gotta go. I have to relieve him. He's been with the baby all day. And, you know, she is ready for Grace to meet Shane. So they go outside and they, you know, say their goodbyes. And then in a twist that I think no one saw fucking coming, Ashley and Grace kiss each other. And I'm over here like, wait, what's happening? Well, they're going to be doing things a little differently than anyone else on this show. Because they are not a typical polygamous family. Oh no. Because she is the one who's seeking a sister wife. Or would it be a sister wife in that case? She's the one seeking a wife. So for him, it would be her, his sister wife. Because she's bi. But here's the other thing that's confusing to me. Because she mentions the woman who is chosen also has to be comfortable to have Shane's biological child. So this isn't a polygamous situation. This feels like it's going to be a thruple. Which, fine, I don't care. But call it what it is. This is seeking thruple. Like, mm, this is different. We haven't had this before, which I'm fine with. This is going to make the show very interesting. But Tiz was not expecting this. But Ashley's home now. And Shane is hoping for another person to get Ashley to, you know, forgive him if he fucks up or something, you know? But Ashley says that there's nothing to really report yet. She's still figuring out her her feelings and she's honestly still figuring out her sexuality because she has recently come out. So I'm going to guess the show is probably filmed in 2022-ish. She just figured out, maybe 2023, but she just figured out that, like, not as much figured out, but confirmed for herself that she is bisexual, like, in 2021, I believe. This is still very new for her. Um, so she tells us that her family was very conservative. Um, and because of that, she wasn't really able to express herself sexually, be her authentic self sexually. And, you know, yeah. But she does tell Shane that she doesn't know whether she is sexually attracted to Grace. Um, she's still trying to figure that out. Um, but, you know, it's funny because he says, like, he worries as to why, because he does ask, is Grace ready to meet? And she's like, it hasn't been brought up. It's interesting to Shane because he's like, 
why hasn't it been brought up? He kind of feels like Grace might be trying to take her away from him, which maybe, maybe not. We're not there yet. We don't know. Um, we haven't quite established that. Um, but we don't know enough. But it is interesting that it isn't coming up. If they've had a few dates already, you're married, you're very pregnant. She's six months pregnant, y'all. She's very pregnant. It's She's showing, basically. And clearly that didn't come from nothing, you know? Clearly there's someone involved. So, you know, that needs to... Why it's not coming up? And in terms of worrying about whether or not jealousy will come in and kind of screw things up, they they say that they constantly check in with each other. Fine, great, that they constantly check in with each other. Um, you know, there's no reason to be jealous because of that, because they're not keeping things from each other. But that doesn't mean that jealousy doesn't fester, that doesn't happen. Of course it could. He says, like, when he found out that she was bisexual, he was definitely open to her exploring this side of herself. But it did remind him of the time in college when he was dating a girl who uh, told him that she was gay. <laughs> so wait, is this guy just turning all of his girlfriends and shit gay? <laughs> Or making them like, I hate your deck so much that I really need pussy in the dead. Like, <sighs> this poor guy, he has no, he can't take a break. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, she says, like, Ashley says that she does like Grace, but you know, she's not yet physically or sexually attracted to her yet. She's taking her time. Um, she says, I think the main roadblock right now is that she wants Grace to meet Shane. Um, that's maybe it's this thing that's kind of holding her back a little bit, but just hasn't come up yet. But it's her responsibility to bring it up. She's the one that's married to him. So she should be the one that's bringing it up. Um, yeah, but that's basically that with them, you know, with the Sherwood family. Have you ever thought of starting your very own podcast? Doing the research, I found something that would have made editing easy and seamless and makes the podcasting experience just that much easier. And I am talking about Ludo. This is a podcast software that I use for our editing of our episodes. It is amazing. It is easy. You're also able to get help from chat, doing chats and getting the information that maybe you just need a little more help with. They also have access to different articles that can also help you that have been just godsends for me. Also with Eludu, you can create clips, you can do your ads, that's just like this very one I'm doing right now, and you can create your trailer very seamlessly just by the clicks of buttons. You can also use Eludu to publish your episodes just straight from the software. It's so easy. I highly, highly recommend it. You can get access to Eludu by using our unique link, which you can find on our show notes, just down there at the bottom at the show notes. And you can get access to an easy software. Let's move on to the couple we love to not ever see again. The Mary fucking Fields. Here we go. We got Garrick. We got Danielle. And you know what? This is going to be great, guys. Because the scripture says, Garrick tells us, to 
feel fill yourself with the Holy Ghost. You know what? I didn't fucking know this, but Garrick tells us that it's a sexual term. What? He goes on to fucking say, it actually means sperm going into you. In that way, it's some um, science, he says. I mean, if a man's DNA goes into her, it's a part of her now. It actually goes to her brain. What the fuck? Listen, this whole time that he was saying this shit, I was dying of laughter. I haven't cried so hard in my life. Anyway, let's continue. You know, yeah, it goes into her brain. Um, and he believes that, um, you know, you know, she's a part of him, but guess what? The man's DNA would go into the woman, but the woman's DNA, no, of course not. That, that can't happen. It doesn't transfer to him. This is some misogynist bullshit. Ugh, this fucking guy. And the whole time that he's saying this shit too, Danielle's looking at him, at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, he's so gross. Um. Anyway, he kind of says, like, it's a beautiful thing when it's done right. <laughs> Good. But then we see the video of, like, when Roberta broke up with them. And, you know, her going to be like, how could she? She said she was my sister. She lied. And the Oscar goes to Danielle. What the fuck? That was fucking great. Anyway, they have not talked to Bert, you know, since then. Garrick um, says, like, you know, he was depressed when Bert didn't come. Um, but, you know, they did start dating again. Maybe Danielle wasn't quite ready to do that yet, but they did start dating again. And they did meet somebody named Natalia. She's 26. And guess where the fuck she's from, guys? Take one. Take a guess. I'll oh, wait. Okay, so if you said Brazil, you are correct. They have a fucking type. And I wrote these fucking idiots. So they are going to tell Sam and Samantha, who are husband and wife, can't get over it, Um, they are going to get the news about this new girl. So Danielle is meeting with Samantha while Garrick is meeting with Sam. And they're breaking the news. Danielle says, so we have been dating and we did meet someone. And Samantha's face when she's telling her this was like, oh no, here we go. Where's she from? Rio de Janeiro. The same fucking place in Brazil too that Burr was from. And one of them, I can't remember which one of them, I think Sam says, you're crazy. And they are crazy. Are you fucking done? And she's much younger than Bert, too. Much younger. But you know what? I think the thing, too, is I think to them, they need to have a reason that her, him and Danielle divorced for Bert to come. I feel like they need to fulfill the, that not going to waste. That's one thing. That's one side of it. I think, honestly, the true reason is the Garrick has a fetish for Brazilian women. I think he has a fetish for certain kind of women who he sees as being a part of his family now, because now he can do this. And I think that Brazilian women is the first thing on his list that he needs to check off and the burden work. He is going to try now with the suit girl, Natalia, who is let me say it again, 26 years old. Definitely make it easier for, for, in terms of getting pregnant and shit, because there won't be this, like, deadline, I guess, because Bert was so much younger, uh, sorry, so much older um, than this new girl, and she was definitely against the clock. That is it for the Merrifields. Let's move on to, again, a new family. One of them, anyways. We have the Sala Hoodens, but I, hopefully I got that correct. 
I think. Can't read my handwriting, guys. So we got a name. Na- I'm sorry. Is it name? Naeem. Naeem. And Nyla. They are Muslim. And as we know, in Islamic faith, polygamy is seen as, in a sense of, there are more women to men, and women deserve to have a husband. So because there are less men than women, um, that is why polygamy is is a thing. So that each woman has a right to have a man in their life, if they want that. So they have been doing polygamy now for two years. It was actually her idea to do this because she thinks that a support of a woman seems to really um help him thrive. Because all this is about is let's help a man fucking thrive. Anyways. And yeah, so he thrives in that. So instead of having just one woman help him thrive and shit, let's have another one. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyways, so they are dating someone currently whose name is Keisha. It is currently long distance. They talk to her all the time, but they haven't met her in person yet. But before we can even worry about that, we are going to meet his mom, who they are going to break this news to, because she doesn't know that they are currently courting somebody. They just know that she just knows that they do want to practice polygamy. So, yeah. So she's here. Her name is Jamila, his mom. So, you know, she does not know that they are actively looking, like I said. Mom says, you know, listen, do you? It's not for me. She says this that clearly triggers the fuck out of him. She says it's Jeremy. That's her opinion. But he goes off on this thing. He's like, why is it Jeremy? Because all you're thinking about is that aspect of it. Look at me. It's so much more than that. Yeah. Go on your fucking high horse. Wait for it. Cause I got news for you guys. But like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go on our high horse and talk about how it's not just about that. And, um, he's like, yeah, you're just thinking like that. And he's like, you know, if she's clean and we're clean, then where's the Jeremy aspect of it? Um, and they do talk about the fact of, you know, pH balancing each other and shit, which is shit. Doesn't do anything. Does, ugh, fuck these people. Anyways. Um, so yeah, but you know, she says though, you know, you're like, why ask if you don't want to know, to know my opinion? Like, why even bother ask me? Why are you telling me this? It doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. And they think, like, her, her comment on him being cure me is ignorant. Okay, but she doesn't, she's not about it. She's not about it. Who cares? Like, it's, it's so stupid that they want her to agree to it. They want her to agree to it. But at the same time, they don't care if she does. Like, you know what I mean? It's dumb. Um, anyway, they use the argument of, well, polygamy is a part of the religion, so not every person who's Muslim actually practices polygamy. So to use the argument that polygamy is a part of the religion doesn't matter. It's the same thing with the Mormons. The LDS church does not believe in polygamy. The FLDS does. So it doesn't mean shit. You know what I mean? It's it's ridiculous. Anyway, she does. It is said that Nyla is the reason that they're doing this. She's the one that's suggested it, you know, saying how he needs the words of affirmation. And, you know, if it's not just me doing it, like imagine his mom, which I agreed with this statement, is. How about try therapy? Because if he needs that much fucking affirmation, something's fucking wrong. Agreed. Agreed. Are you kidding me? Nyla says, you know, she's really judgy. You know, she has an opinion, but so judgy. But it's like, okay, so then if you expected her opinion, but the fact that you don't like her opinion means she's being judgmental. I can't really tell you I don't like these guys. I can't really tell you this. I do not like them. They can fuck off. I don't like them. Anyways, that is it for the Salahudan, Sula, Sulahudan, 
Huden. Sorry, I'll remember. Um, and that's basically it for the episode, but let's do a this season on. Danielle thinks that Natalia wants to take Garrick away, and guess what? If she wanted that, she would succeed. Because Garrick is ick. Um, looks like one husband might be getting intimate with somebody who we haven't met yet. We haven't met them yet. Naeem is not about the sex, as he said to his mom. Like, that's not the most important thing. Come on. But you know what? He really does want to fuck this girl that they're talking to right now. Fuck these people. Anyways, Shane, as mentioned, thinks that Grace is trying to steal Ashley away. And that's basically it for the episode. Again, guys, thank you for being patient with me. Um, I'll probably get this to you very soon. Probably the next day when we're recording this, you probably get it on Monday before the show comes out. Um, but yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, don't forget that uh, you can also share us with everyone in your life if you really love this. And I do want to read those reviews. I'm definitely getting five-star ratings, but I want to read those reviews. So send me those reviews and I will read those four and five-star reviews on the podcast. Also, we're on every one of your favorite podcast apps, every one of them, including you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to either Facebook or Instagram at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also find us on Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, at Reality Tea Times 2 Pod. We also have our email, which is at Reality Tea Times 2 at Hotmail.com. Definitely want to hear from you guys. And we also have our new website where you can listen to all of these episodes. You can review the podcasts on there as well. You can connect with me in any way, all the stuff. It's all there. And you can find me there at www.realitytimes2, all spelled out, um, dot podpage.io. It's there. And don't forget, I also have my other podcast with my friend Mikkel, Next Week Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different topics. We are finishing up with our Black History Month series right now, so it's been great over there. Um, but you can find us on any of your favorite podcast apps over there as well. Or you can also go to YouTube um, and you go to Next Take Podcast, as well as our website, which is solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. Um, so yeah, there's with that and that's basically that. And again, don't forget if all of this information is overwhelming, we do have all of the links everything in our show notes but that is it for now guys thanks bye